If you've never gotten a sync deal or placement before, or never made over $2,000 in one sitting for your music, or if you've been doubting that it's even possible to do because the genre of music you make, the way you present yourself, or what country you live in, whatever. The question that you should be asking isn't whether those circumstances are true, but what do we do about it if they are? And how can we face the very real possibility, which is what if your music just isn't good enough? I get comments like these all the time from artists who, mind you, are not in sync licensing saying, I quit trying sync because reps didn't listen to my music, they never responded back to me, or it's not worth it because it's just too time consuming. And every single time I get these, I think, what if your music just isn't good enough? It probably isn't because most music producers and indie artists are just hobbyists. It just pisses me off so much because I've seen so many creatives adopt this victim mentality and quit sync within three, four months just because they didn't get a, a call back. And they start saying it on public forums that it doesn't work for anybody and it just has this mentality of dragging others down like crabs in a bucket. And I cannot stand it. They're taking away different opportunities from others that are actually willing to put in the hard work. I haven't done a rant video like this before and I think it needs to be done because it applies to everyone trying to break into sync licensing. And if you think that earning six figures is easy in any type of market or industry, you don't want it bad enough. And that's just the honest truth. Now let's get real. It's easy to blame a lack of responses on external factors like I don't have the right plugins or I don't have a cousin that I know that's in the industry so there's no way I can make it or it's all being gate kept behind paywalls. That's not entirely true at all. And honestly, if someone's forcing you to pay for a placement opportunity, run as fast as you can because legit reps do it for free all the time. That's industry standard. But have you actually considered that maybe your music just isn't hitting the mark? That's probably more plausible than anything else because yes, they're all busy, but it's been proven time and time again through myself, my clients, and others that are in the sync licensing industry that answering an email is not normally the, the biggest cause for you not to be successful in sync licensing. It's just not the case. Volume of quality tracks is. This isn't about putting you down, okay? Like, I understand this is a rant, but it's about lifting everyone up. Think of it as a hard truth from a good friend. Quality really does matter. And if you're not getting placements yet, it's time to question your production or your lyrical skills. Are they even applicable for sync licensing? Are your tracks polished? Do they stand out? Are they actually what the industry wants right now? Do they sound good enough to be on billboard charts? Is it arranged the right way for sync? Because if you don't measure quality against quality, it'll never be as good as it could be. This victim mentality is such a toxic trait and is never actually common among winners in our private community or any of my colleagues. They don't like my music because I'm too new to the industry. Maybe the industry is biased because they don't like when I use samples from Splice in my music. Probably for a good reason. Look, these biases exist, I don't say that they don't, but that's just human nature. So what are we going to do to actually combat that? If you're leaning into the mindset that you just won't get placements because it just doesn't happen to you, you're not lucky enough, or it's just a probability thing, it's easier to blame the system, I get it. But it's even harder and more rewarding if you can just look in the mirror and ask yourself, how can I actually improve? Because this is obviously not good enough. How can I make my music so undeniable that a music supervisor says, yo, I don't care how much the sync fee is, like we have to get this track in this project because it's exactly what I'm looking for. For instance, imagine a chef that opens up a restaurant and no one shows up. Yeah, you can blame how bad the location looks or is around the area. You can blame the economy or the competition, whatever. But what if the food just isn't good enough? There's plenty of hole in the wall spots where the food just absolutely slaps. It doesn't matter where it's from. Did they give up? No. They refined their recipes, improved on the ingredients, perfected the presentation, and now they're able to become a local legend in your community. That's how it works. You have to question the quality of what you're doing. The same goes with your music as well. Your tracks have to be irresistible in order to make it nowadays. And that takes time, which is okay. You're going to make music anyway. Think about someone that goes to the gym on a regular basis but doesn't see results in a month. They could quit and say that the gym just doesn't work for them. They have a slow metabolism or whatever. But if they didn't evaluate their workout routine, how much they're dieting and actually their dedication, so maybe they weren't even going to the gym every time that they said they were, that affects success. And success is the exact same thing we're looking for in sync, right? So here are four different things that I would do to get ahead of 99% of everyone else that's trying to break into the industry and make it happen at breakneck speed. 
First and foremost, you need to seek feedback. Don't just rely on your own ears. They stink, let's be honest. Especially if you've never done sync before, how would you even know what to listen for? You need to get honest feedback from other producers, sync artists, and sync agencies that are already in the game. It's way better than trial and error like I had to do. It took me a very long time to figure that out. Second thing, you need to improve your skills, obviously, after you identify what needs to change. So invest in learning new production techniques, you can upgrade your sound libraries to make sure that everything sounds crisp and expensive. Stay current with industry trends. This is all important because you're not a hobbyist anymore. If you take care of your skills seriously, then your skills will take care of you seriously. Third thing, you need to make sure that you analyze successful tracks. Why would you ever shoot in the dark and experiment with something that has not been proven to work yet? In my opinion, to me, it's a waste of time. Listen to what's actually getting placed. Close your eyes and turn on the TV and just figure out how this music works with the narrative. Dissect these tracks and understand what makes them work. How do they tick? You can watch breakdown videos of people that actually have placements. They, that way you're looking under the hood and getting the inside scoop of mentally how they even are approaching the brief to write to picture or how did it fit that media platform. All this stuff is important. And the last and final most important thing is you have to be persistent. Persistence beats luck every single time. And that includes not just making music, but actually just reaching out to different sync reps. The follow-up game is so crucial, but 47% of music creators don't ever do it enough. So don't let silence deter you, okay? Every no response is just a step closer to a yes, especially if you're going into sync licensing for the first time ever. Think of sync licensing as like a single player game that as you level up, it becomes a multiplayer. You've got to assume that nothing's going to change, there's biases, and you have to win anyway. Your music does not get better by just feeling sorry for yourself. And this is a common trope between a lot of musicians, that a broken, starving artist is like some type of badge of honor. It's not. That's what all the major labels want indie artists like us to believe in the first place. So if you actually want to get around people who are actually winning in sync licensing, come through to our private community called the Sync Alliance. All the things we do, we just literally talked about. Weekly calls with myself and my team, personal content made just for you and your questions that are nuanced towards your special situation. We also get your music in front of music supervisors, sync agents, and other sync professionals so that you don't have to find them and also you can have the confidence when you actually have them vetted by some of the professionals that you can start sending that stuff out yourself and landing sync deals. If that sounds interesting to you, join the Sync Alliance, it's down in the description. Just remember, the only thing that you can actually control in this whole music realm or industry or whatever, regardless if it's sync or not, is your music and the effort that's involved to create it. So keep grinding, keep growing, and get out there and make something dope.